Chris Penn here, technical trainer for Bosch Home Comfort Group. Today, I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Dave Fayok, also a technical trainer for Bosch. And today, we're going to talk about the brand new IDS Premium 454B product line. Chris, it doesn't look much different to me. The size and dimensions look pretty much identical. It's really not that much difference. There are some notable changes that we're going to go over today. I see there's red tags on there. What's that red tag mean on that outdoor unit? The red unit? tag is indicating that we do have that mildly flammable A2L rated R454B refrigerant. Wow. Yeah. And so we have that sensor in here. That's probably why that sensor's in there as well then, That huh? is exactly it. That's one of the biggest changes. That sensor itself. And along with that, you know, as, as the previous products that we've kind of already been talking about is is we're going to use that ACL sensor, sense a leak in case so uh, we, we have a refrigerant leak. We're going to turn the outdoor unit off, and we're going to turn that indoor fan motor to high fan speed. Interesting stuff. Well, good deal. So there's some changes come down the line, I guess. We have 35 checkpoints now with the new board versus is, the 25 that we had we before. We had 24 on the old board. That is correct. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we have a little more there, and we have a little more fault codes. There's a 34 fault codes, I believe, that we have capable. 34 more fault codes, yeah. So we have a couple of additional sensors and, and things that we had to do to, to accommodate the new refrigerant, sensor being one of them, and uh, some other things with the board and, and indoor. Um, what else uh, changed to, the, uh, to accommodate that sensor on the indoor furnace? So we have a P&Q terminal for communication. And so the P&Q is going to communicate to the outdoor unit and tell it what it's doing for dehumidification process, for setting the cold temperatures, for choosing fan speed. All that comes through with the communication, but we don't have to communicate if we don't want to. We certainly don't. So what that's going to do is what? Uh, enhance dehumidification mode at that enhance point? Enhance that process, give us better comfort, better cooling, perhaps running dehumidification beyond the set point. Okay. Perhaps that'll come down the line. Okay. There's some changes coming with the thermostat BCC 110 sure. in a few weeks. So what other, uh, what other changes did we make to that board to accommodate um, the, the A2L sensor? So when there's a sensing lock of A2L, what it's going to do is put the fan in high speed, lock out the compressor, and it's going to also run until that, that fault is cleared. So there are a couple of design changes there. Yes, the board is definitely different. We have an enclosed fan motor as well for the uh, flammable refrigerant, so there's no chance of explosion from open face okay. motors. Okay, so little bit of uh, uh, flammability risk mitigation. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Um, you mentioned communication. Does that come factory set for communication? No, or they, so the, the system comes with a pigtail, such as you have in that brochure, if you could show that one there. Okay, so we That would got be this. coming with the air handler as well. Okay, so we're going to get one of these for each of the units. And then so, you have to choose whether you want to go communication or four wire. If you want to communicate, there are dip switches you will have to trip to set up for communication. You cannot run the four wire and communication together. If you do, it'll take out the board. That's a good point. You That's have to point. choose which way you want to That's go. That's a good point. Otherwise, we just hook with uh, regular thermostat, with regular thermostat wire. And communicate through with the four conductor as we've been in the past. Okay. But the enhanced, the enhanced dehumidification only comes with communication. Okay. Okay. So we're still using the same color wires. We, we had the, the yellow, the, the blue. The, the, the brown and, well, and the Well, we got a black now. Oh, we, we got a black we now. We got a black in place okay. of the brown. Okay. And so that black is? Going to be our common. That's going to be our common wire. Okay. Black is common at this okay. point. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, as far as, um, you know, we're talking about changes made to the indoor, we also made some changes to the outdoor. Uh, along with that, a couple of uh, some keynotes here. One that kind of hits the top of the list when, it, when we're talking about safety is we took the reversing valve coil from a 24-volt coil to a 240-volt coil. Um, this actually on the previous board housed, uh, a, I guess, a miniature transformer, Correct. if you will. Correct. And so now it's just uh, one thing, again, notable, so that if I am going in there, assuming I'm checking a 24-volt coil, I got to be careful now because it's going to be a 220-volt coil. So that was another thing there. We also added a second pressure transducer. Our previous product only had one pressure transducer. That's an interesting thing. With the second transducer, now we're down to one pound increments in, in our recording of measurements versus the 15 pound that we were seeing before. Okay, okay. And what are we using, um, or what is another benefit for adding that second pressure transducer? So we can do sub colon superheat from the units without adding gauges or any other additional tools. So it's going to give us that information? It will give us the information if you know how to read it, and that's important. to get. Guys, okay. one thing we didn't talk too much about, it's really advantageous to come to classes that Bosch offers to really understand the functionality of the units and the capabilities of reading the codes. 
We are pretty simple stuff to do. Our codes are very forth leading to where the problems are, but you have to understand how to interpolate those codes okay. and what it's telling you. Okay, okay. Some, uh, some other things too that got added to the outdoor and indoor unit was we had to have some components that were R454B compatible. One of those components is an updated compressor. We are still using a GMC GMCC compressor, mm -hmm. uh, which is now 454B rated. Mm -hmm. And we also had to change the indoor TXV to accommodate the new refrigerant 454B. So while this looks like the same, same unit, maybe even the same case coil, because the A2L sensor is in here, that's a lot of the liability issue, which means you'll have to update all the equipment if you're going to move ahead okay. on this application. What about refrigerant lines? Do we do anything different with refrigerant lines? Uh, they're still copper. Okay. There's still a 3 8. There's still 3 8. Not three one. sizes of 3 8, just one? There's 3 8, 3 8, or 3 8. Okay. So we want to be very clear it's okay. got to be 3 8. Okay. Suction line is 3 quarter or 7 8. So we're still limited to a 50 foot line set lift, 150 foot line set length. So nothing changed with the line set? Well, the, yeah, the, the 150 foot line set still the same. Still the same from old product to new product. If you want to downsize, you can downsize one size, 5 8 on the 3 ton. Okay. And we go down to 3 quarter on the 5 ton, you can lose up to 10% of your capacity. I was going to say, is that, gonna, that. is that going to change it capacity? It can drop the capacity okay. depending okay. on the line set that's, length. That's good to know. That's good and to always know. the suction line, hot gas line needs to be insulated. The liquid line doesn't necessarily need to be. Okay. It may enhance the performance if you're going to a hot attic, not ventilated. And charge, uh, charge is still going to be the same. We're, we're close. It's 0 0.6, 0 0.5, or 5, yeah, 0 0.59, 0 0.6 0 .5, ounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're slicing hairs at that point. So we give you the still 15 foot line set charge. Okay. So if you're going to go with a full 150 foot length, we subtract 15, we're 135, 35.6. There, there you About go. 81 ounces of charge would be the most charge you'd ever okay. put on this system. Okay. We still have the oil return monitoring package. We don't need to worry about traps. Nothing's changed there. Nothing's changed Nothing's there. Nothing's changed there. So there really hasn't been a whole lot of changes, but just a few that are significant. I do also want to point out that we did make no changes to the size. Three ton is still the same three ton size as it was before, as is the five. And the five, I believe, is about eight inches taller, uh, a little bit higher than, than, the, than the three ton. Uh, no changes there. And the footprint, 30 by 30. So, Chris, how can we make a 30 by 30 R? or yeah, a 20 sear 30 by 30 unit. How can Bosch do that? We're going to do it with um, the number of rows of coil. Double row a coil. Double row coil. Eight inch print, and we still have our hydrophilic coating on there. Exactly. And that whole goal is to get moisture off the coil. It, it easily allow moisture to move off the coil. For Especially defrost in the, and the Defrost and in that heating mode, absolutely. Um, you do notice that we still have it up on pump up, so location, location, location yep. is still good. We got to get out of the snow. We got to let that defrost water to drain. So no changes there. Critical, two foot isolation distance from home. No eaves where snow and ice can fall off and fall on the top of that unit and prevent. What happens issues. if I do let uh, water get in there? What's going to happen to this product? It may not work. It's going to it's going to take out the coil, perhaps take out the fan motor. So we're going to grow ice. Yeah, we could. All if that's going to apply. Outside, we're going to grow. All ice. that's going to apply. We're Best gonna... on gable ends if you can, where there's no roof slide that you have to worry about. Same with drift applications. If you're in snow country and you get some high blowing drifts, you might okay. want to choose a different location for that process. Okay. In a, in the place Bob where I live, they don't put heat pumps up in the mountains because they form igloos. Igloos are they have such high snow drifts that they'll actually encase that unit and mm -hmm. then it melts out the inside. Oh, okay. So okay. location is kind of critical for your okay. point. Okay. Well, um, a couple other two, uh, some other points here. We do have cooling operation down to 15 degrees um, uh, on the on the heating side, down to minus four. None of that's really changed. That's all the same. One thing that did change slightly was uh, the percentage of operation on this unit. Slightly different than the old product. Yeah, we went from 36 to 35 percent on the lower end. We're still going up to the 110 on the upper end, as far as AC parts, AC goes. Okay. 127, I believe, on the heat side. Okay. And that is going to be a percentage of what the compressor can run. You know, another question that comes up is, can can we pump this unit down? So what's involved in pumping down a unit, Chris? Well, um, we got the unit running, you know, uh, pumping down is, I want to take the refrigerant that's in this 100 foot or 150 foot line set, I want to suck it back into this unit, right? So we're going to recommend you do that on force mode when you do that, because you are in a limited time process to do that. How much time is that? Five minutes when you get below 42 PSI before it locks out. You got okay, five minutes so once it gets below that. If we got a lot of refrigerant, we could take longer than five minutes to do that. Yeah, so we want to run that in force mode when you do your pump down, always in AC if you can. Okay. And so then, it's probably a good idea to have gauges hooked up to this. 
Um, and, and by doing so, um, we're, we're going to uh, we're going to shut our liquid line valve off, and we're going to allow the suction line of the compressor in the cooling mode to suck the refrigerant back in. Once I get below this number or get to zero, well, then yeah, I'm going to shut that valve we off. We probably don't want to go to zero or negative. Be up a little bit of pressure. Stay positive on that that rotary compressor. Be aware that when you shut it off, it's probably going to boil off again. The liquid line will still have refrigerant laying in there. Boil off, you might need to bump it a second sure, time. Sure. Or that's a de minimis release at that point, and that's where you'd end up. Sure, sure. Uh, another two, uh, another safety aspect of this too, as we talk about um, uh, refrigerant or refrigeration repairs, we got to keep in mind that this is a mildly flammable refrigerant. So when we are making those repairs, what are some key points that we need to do? Uh, in, in the service and repair aspect of this product. If you're going to do anything with brazing or debrazing, you're going to have to flow nitrogen through to push out all the existing refrigerant. Okay. Bas basically, the recommendations are to cut things out. Have no torch. So don't braze out a compressor. If I suck this thing down or you know, use a recovery machine to get this thing down, there, I could potentially still have refrigerant here, right? Correct. It'll blow off and it's not going to leave it out of the oil. The oil will continue to hold that sure. refrigerant. So you want to do a purge process with your nitrogen and then a flow afterwards. Purge is to have enough volume to push all the refrigerant through and then flow just keeps you going a steady flow to eliminate the oxygen and the three parts of a triangle, fuel, oxygen, and spark. We take out the oxygen, there's no chance of flight. Okay. So that's the whole purpose for pushing nitrogen through. Okay, okay. Um, outside of that, I think that pretty much covers a lot of the notable changes. Um, again, wasn't a whole lot, but there are some significant changes that we do need to make sure that, that we pay attention to. I agree, and the biggest, the biggest factor that comes to mind is it has to have A2L rating on everything we do today. Your tools need to go down that, that line too is A2L. For spark purposes, flammability. Okay, so like brushless motors and all that, things your, like your, that to mitigate spark. Yep. Your vacuum Absolutely. pumps, your reclaimers have 10 foot longer cords. They want to have a 10 foot isolation yep. around that unit so no one comes in with an open match, light, et cetera, that something could go wrong. Okay. Cool. That's it. Hey, Chris, I really appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate the time taking, uh, taking with me today as well. Uh, we thank you for joining us today. And, and have a great uh, have day. A, have a great day.